object at rest will remain at rest until acted on by some outside force. Conversely, an object in motion will remain in motion until acted on by some outside force. Call this inertia. Think of inertia as laziness. An object wants to continue doing what it's already doing. It's lazy. Once this ball reaches the end of the ramp, it should continue forever and ever, if no other forces act on it. The cannonball, once it leaves the cannon, will fly through the air because of inertia. There is no force that pushes it along through the air. Watch these pennies carefully. The pennies have inertia. It will take a net force to get them to change their motion. Right now there are two forces acting, the support force of the paper and gravity. If I remove very quickly the support force of the paper, gravity will change the motion of the pennies and pull them into the beaker. Comparing these two individuals, I would say the person on the right has more inertia. No, not because he's lazy, he just is made of more stuff. Just to review some terms with you, mass is a property of matter. It's how much stuff is in an object, how much matter an object contains. And we measure that with a triple beam balance. Volume, on the other hand, is how much space matter takes up. We measure that with a graduated cylinder. Nice job. Weight and mass are two different things. While mass is the amount of matter you have, weight is a force. Weight is based on the gravitational pull between you and the Earth. If you go to the moon, you'll have the same amount of matter, but you'll have less weight because the moon is smaller. If you want to be smaller and lose mass, go on a diet. If you want to lose weight, go to the moon. To get an object to move, we must apply a force, a net force. There is no change of motion here for this object because there is no net force. Both applied forces are equal and opposite. In this situation, the applied forces are in the same direction, so we have a net force. At the bottom, we have a 5 Newton force to the left and a 10 Newton force to the right. Overall, the net force is 5 Newtons to the right. There are two forces being applied on this book, but since there's no change in motion, there must be a zero net force. The force of gravity pulls it down, and the table, equal and opposite, pushes it up. The table is what's called the support force, or the normal force. If I'm going to move this filing cabinet across the ground, I must overcome the force of friction. The force of friction occurs between any two objects rubbing together. Once I overcome the force of friction with my applied force, I get a change in motion of the filing cabinet. If I reduced my applied force just to match the force of friction, there is no more change in motion as we see here. To help understand this concept, let's see how we can measure motion. Speed is a rate. It's the rate at which we change positions over time. If it takes me 10 minutes to travel 5 miles to school, am I going 30 miles per hour that whole 10 minutes? Obviously not. So we have to distinguish between instantaneous speed and average speed. The 30 miles per hour is my average speed over the whole 10 minutes, but at any point in time, I could be traveling faster or slower than that 30 miles per hour. When I come to a stoplight, I have to go zero miles per hour. That is my instantaneous speed. Velocity and speed are the same thing, except with velocity we're adding a directional term, north as we see here. If I round a curve at the same speed, I'm changing velocity but not changing speed. My speed stays at 130 kilometers per hour, but because I'm changing direction, my velocity is changing.
Any change in velocity over a certain time is acceleration. So acceleration is a rate of a rate, and it is found with the following equation. Let's go back to our simulation of pushing a file folder, and let's analyze it in terms of acceleration, force, and velocity. This graph shows us an increase in velocity, and then velocity levels off, and at the very end, we have a decrease in velocity. Let's see why. Looking at the applied force, when we have a net force, the applied force greater than the force of friction, we had a change in the motion. We had an increase in velocity. When I reduced my applied force so that it equaled the frictional force, a net zero force, there was no change in velocity. It was still moving, but there was no change. We had two meters per second, and we had a zero net force as it moved two meters per second. When I stopped applying a force, the force of friction then brought the file folder to zero velocity. Once again, a net force negative changed the velocity. Looking at acceleration, Net force applied to the file folder gave us an acceleration, which is a change of velocity. A zero net force meant I have no acceleration and no change in velocity. In the end, I stopped pushing. The force of friction was the net force, which gave us a negative acceleration, and we had a change in velocity down to zero.